All right. So the draw activities can be a little confusing, a little complicated if you're not used to the mechanics. So I'm going to go through this first example with you, and then you'll have four more to do on your own. But follow along and learn how to use the draw it feature in Nearpod. So let's begin. So first thing you want to do is to read the directions. These are pretty straightforward. Read the text, follow the instruction. Uh, we already know from the, the, the introductory slide to the assignment that we're going to be asked to look at several primary source quotes. Your job is to take what you've learned about the principles and apply them to these quotes. So the first thing you want to do is to get rid of the instructions. Those can get in the way sometimes. So you can use this arrow over here to move those instructions out of the way so you can see your whole canvas. Um, notice at the bottom, you've got your tools that you're going to work with. You've got a, some writing tools, a text tool. You can use pictures. Uh, and then there's an eraser tool as well. There's also an undo and a redo uh, uh, buttons. There are undo and redo buttons if you need those. There's a clear, uh, clear the screen feature and a lock feature if you want to lock down so you don't uh, mess up what you're doing. This says, during the debate over the Constitution, James Madison made this argument in an essay we now call the Federalist 45. They're going to read the quote. The powers delegated to the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. Those which are to remain in the state governments are numerous and indefinite. So it says, circle the principle that best describes Madison's argument about the federal government. Before we do that, I think it's important to go back and highlight some of the key words in the quote. That's just a skill you should learn to do to help you analyze any sort of document you're looking at whether it's a primary or secondary source document. I'm going to use the highlight feature down here. Uh, pick the size of the highlighter you want and the color. I'm going to go with traditional yellow. And then you go back up to the top. <clears throat> so what are some things that we see here? We see the word powers. I'm going to highlight powers. I see the word delegated. So I can highlight that. So we're talking about powers delegated under the Constitution to the federal government. Are few and defined. Keep that in mind. Powers delegated to the federal government are few and defined. Then it also talks about state governments. It says those, referring to the powers, those powers remaining with the states are numerous and indefinite. What do you think about this quote? What principle can we use uh, to relate back to this quote? So what are our options? Popular sovereignty, checks and balances, limited government, rule of law, separation of powers. Now, right off the top, I was going in one direction. I was thinking federalism. Federalism is not a choice. So maybe you were thinking federalism as well. If we can find the best, the best answer here. Popular sovereignty. But think about what popular sovereignty is. Can we relate it back to the quote? Checks and balances. Can we relate it back to the quote? Limited government. Rule of law. Separation of powers. What do you think? Well, let's start to eliminate some. I'm going to choose the pin function and I'm just going to eliminate some. Let's go with red. <clears throat> so I'm going to eliminate popular sovereignty. 
Think about what popular sovereignty is. Popular sovereignty has to do with the people, power, power of the people when it comes to government. I don't see anywhere in this quote that specifically mentions the people or talks about the power of the people. So I'm going to eliminate that. I'm also going to eliminate checks and balances, separation of powers. Why? Because those two principles specifically deal with different parts of the government and how they have separate powers and how they can limit each other's power. And we're talking about branches. Some of you might have thought, well, we are talking about state and federal government. Isn't that a way to divide power? Yes, you're right. But, and, and people get this confused all the time. When we divide government between national, state, and local, that concept is federalism. Federalism deals with how we divide power among the different levels of government. When we talk about the branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial, now we're talking about Montesquieu's concept of separation of powers and checks and balances. So remember, levels of government is federalism. Branches of government is separation of powers. Let's go back and look at what we're looking for. So we are looking for a principle that is specifically about the federal government. So in this case, I think that makes it pretty clear. So if we focus on what the quote says about the federal government, the powers are few and defined. So when power is few and defined, I think we can safely say that limited government, let me change my uh, color down here. Let's go with green. So limited government is gonna be my official answer because the constitution is what limits the power of the federal government. Oh. And we circled, not a big deal, underline, circle, highlight. We could be flexible, can't we? All right, now finally, we're gonna go down and we're gonna use this text feature. And choose the size of your text. Don't wanna go too big. Let's go with, uh, let's go with blue this time. I'm going to move my text box down here, the size to fit our area. There we go. Perfect. There's our text box we're working with. Explain the connection between them, what Madison said and the principle you selected. So we kind of talked that out already, haven't we? So now we can just go ahead and put it into text form. So the constitution. limits the power of the federal government by let's use the word they use by delegating specific powers by delegating by delegating it Specific powers. And that's all you need. That's all you need. We could have gone on and talked about the Bill of Rights and how that limits the power of the government as well. But because that's not part of the quote, we don't really have to go that far. But you're welcome to go as far as you want to go. Elaborate as much as you want. So there you have it. That's basically what you're going to do. So you're going to get four examples. I've gone through the first one with you. So you got four more to do. You're going to do those on your own. Okay. Good luck.